Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we'll show you how to sew a sleeved rib Roman shade. This Roman shade incorporates sleeves that you sew onto your decorative fabric. This Roman shade does not utilize a lining fabric, so you'll need to pick a decorative fabric that'll look good on the inside and the outside, and a fabric that will allow the amount of light that you desire to filter through it since it's only a single layer of fabric. This style of Roman shade incorporates sewn sleeves which are used to hold the ribs in place. These sleeves are created by folding the fabric under and then sewing them down. Because this process requires careful accuracy when sewing the sleeves in place, a lining fabric is not recommended. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. Let's get started and show you how to build your very own sleeved ribbed Roman shade. The height coming down all the way to the bottom is totally up to you, but do know that if you, if you mount the shade here, it's going to cover more of your view. So we're going to mount it up a little bit higher so that when the shade is pulled up, it doesn't block as much of our window. And as far as the sides go, you can have it end all the way out here if you'd like. Uh, we're going to come about an inch outside of the window frame. And I'll make it uh, 35 inches. I'm going to have it be about an inch or so from each edge. So that's 57 inches. Calculating in the materials required for your Roman shade is made easy. Visit the Sarat website and scroll down to the bottom and there you will find a link called Fabric Calculator. Click on it. You'll notice many projects. Scroll down to Window Treatments. Click on that. Now scroll down and find Sleeve Ribbed Roman Shades. Here you can enter the desired finish size of your Roman shade. Ours is 57 by 35. The fabric's width that we'll be using is actually 54 inches, but we're gonna put 70 inches in this because we're gonna be running the width along the running length of the fabric. The fabric that we selected allows us to run the width along the running length or the width of the fabric. So we won't have to join two pieces of fabric together to make up the width. Our width is going to go across the running length of the fabric because we don't have a pattern and that way I don't have to sew two panels together. Going back to the fabric calculator, the rib diameter is next. These are the ribs that we're going to be using. They are a quarter inch in diameter. That's why we have 0.25 in the uh, rib diameter section. If you purchase the plastic ribs from Sayerite, just leave the 0.25 in the field that comes up automatically. If you're using a different size rib, you'll need to change this size here. Our fabric is a solid, so we don't have a vertical repeat, so we'll leave that at zero. The desired rough height of folded stack comes up automatically depending on the size of the shade. We do recommend that you leave this alone, but if you'd like to make modifications, feel free. Now we can hit the calculate button. The calculator will determine the amount of fabric you need, the size to cut it, the placement of each one of the sleeves for the ribs, and a full materials list. The links shown in blue are clickable, so you can actually click on one of these links to see the product and order it from the Sayrite website. Going back to the fabric calculator, scroll down and you'll see a rendering of your shade. After you've ordered all your supplies, we're going to start with cutting the decorative fabric to size. We'll go back to the fabric calculator and you can see here the decorative fabric cut size per shade for our shade is 51 inches high by 60 inches wide. Okay, we squared in this side so that it's uh, perpendicular to the edge of the fabric. And remember, we're, our width is going to go across the running length of the fabric because we don't have a pattern and that way I don't have to sew two panels together. So according to the Sayrite Fabric Calculator, I need to cut a 60 inch width. So I'm going to mark the fabric and then strike a line that is perpendicular to the edge of the fabric. 
So I'm going to strike a couple lines just to make sure that it's nice and straight. Now light fabric has a mind of its own and is not necessarily always straight just when you lay it down. So what I've done is I've used the edge of my table here for my line or my edge that I cut straight and I've lined up the fabric perfectly on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this selvage edge is straight with my table. And if it's a little bit off, I just bump the fabric so that I make sure that it looks nice and straight. Then I'm going to use a T-square again and I'm going to cut off the selvage edge. Now there are dots in the fabric where the machine actually did the pulling on the fabric. Um, I'm going to cut those off, though I could leave those in because I am going to create a double hem, but I think it's just better to get those out of the way. So here's where I'm going to strike my line. So we don't have to cut the other selvage edge off because of the fact that uh, our height is only, I believe, 46. I'll check the Sarah fabric calculator again, our cut height. So we're just going to cut this one side. Going to the fabric calculator, we can see our height is actually 51 inches. So now we can go to our fabric and mark it at 51 inches in a few spots, strike a line, and cut it there as well. This looks like it would be the width, and this looks like the height, but our window's a little bit different. So I recommend this is our height. So I'm going to put an H here with a line going this direction, and I'm going to put a W here with a line going this direction. That way I don't get confused about which is the width because this is our width and this is our height. So along our width edge at the bottom, I'm going to cut off three inches of fabric. This will create our sleeve for our, our bottom rod and I'm gonna use the clear acrylic ruler for this so I place it on the three inches and I'll strike a line all the way across uh, with this ruler and cut off this part of the fabric. Okay, don't throw this away. We're going to be using it in a future step, but for now we're going to lay it aside and we're going to create the hems going up the sides of our shade first. In the next chapter, we'll sew double hems on the sides of the decorative fabric. So this is the height, the long edges going vertical, and we're going to mark one inch in from the edge, and I'm going to use my clear acrylic ruler to do this. This is going to create our uh, double fold. This is our first half inch uh, fold line, so we'll fold up to that line, but this line is one inch from the raw edge of the fabric. Now what we want to do is, we, it, this is a very light fabric, so we're going to be using a light thread. We want to put the double sided tape as far away from uh, this as edge as possible, in other words as close to this edge as possible, so we don't sew through the double sided tape with our very light thread, because a light thread will have a tendency to cause sewing problems when it sews through the double-sided tape. So I'm going to try to avoid sewing through the double-sided tape. So see how close I'm getting it to the raw edge of the fabric? That's important. I'm going to break my tape, and this double-sided tape is a non-yellowing type. This is a quarter-inch basting tape for canvas and upholstery. So I'll peel that off, and then I'll fold that to the line, which, which means, means that this part of the fabric has no double-sided tape in it. I like to start in the center because I just think it's easier to create a hem that way. And it's okay if a little double-sided tape shows up on the outside surface here because we're going to create a double hem and then I'll base to this side. Now we'll measure over from this folded edge two inches and strike a line and then we'll fold to that line which will create a one inch hem. So now here, the double-sided tape, we don't want it too close to the edge because we don't want to have to sew through it. So I'm actually going to put it inside that edge, see like this, so that I can sew here without having to go through double-sided tape. So it's almost on top of the uh, uh, raw edge it, it's a, that's here. It's a little bit over that raw edge, which is actually good, just like that. And that gives us, the, that means we can sew in this area without having to hit any of the double sided tape here or on the other side of this hem. I'll peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. And then again, I like to start from the center and I'll fold up to my line. Yeah. 
once it's basted, what I'll do is I'll look down to make sure it looks nice and straight. If it isn't, I'll make modifications. And then I'm going to repeat this process for the other side. After you create the double hems, measure it and confirm that it is the desired uh, size, which for us is 57 inches. So this is perfect. If it's not, you can modify the hems. We're using a very light thread and a size number 12 needle. I'm set up in about a three millimeter stitch length here. And I'm going to sew very close to this edge here because I don't want to sew through my double sided tape. So I'm going to just put my foot down here. I'm going to make sure this edge is right up against the inside of my presser foot. And we're going to sew. And I don't need to worry about reversing here because of the fact that uh, the ends are going to be finished. Now it's always a good idea to check your tension to make sure that you're happy with it. Yeah, it looks good. There's no puckering going on, so I'm happy. So I'm gonna sew down this side. And when we reach the other side, again, we don't have to worry about doing any reversing. And we'll do the same thing to the hem on the opposite side of the shade. Next, we're gonna take that strip that we cut off and create a bottom sleeve. And this bottom sleeve will hold our bottom rod in a future step. Okay, we have our shade on the table. The hem is facing down against the table. So this is the outside surface of my shade. This is the vertical height or width of the shade, and this is the width of the shade. So now I'm gonna take my three inch uh, strip of fabric that we cut off the bottom. We're going to roughly center it. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. You just want the overlap to be almost equal on both sides. And I'm gonna lift it up a little bit because we know that's where it's gonna go. I'm going to take my double-sided tape here and I'm going to again baste very close to the raw edge because I don't want to sew through this with a very light thread because it'll gum up my needle. We'll peel off the transfer paper and then I'm going to start from the center and I'm going to lower this down and baste it so the raw edges are uh, perfectly lined up with each other. Like that, and then over here. Okay, on this sleeve, we're gonna be folding it to create a one inch hem. So I'm gonna take my clear acrylic ruler, and I probably could have done this before I basted it on, but I can see through it pretty nicely. You probably can't. And I'm gonna strike a line that is two inches from that edge so that I can fold to this line. Now I'm gonna take my double-sided tape and might as well create this hem now. And we're gonna put it again very close to this uh, raw edge here. Uh, and we're gonna stick it down. Peel up the transfer paper of this sleeve. And then we'll start at the center and baste to that line. And we'll go to the left side and the right side and, and baste it down. We'll confirm that this should equal about two inches down the uh, side of this. If it isn't, make modifications because you want this to be nice and straight. And you can also sight down it to look to see if it looks straight. Now we've sewed the sides a little bit, so they're going to want to um, basically go up because it shrinks a little bit. So I'm going to pull down on the side just to straighten it. It looks pretty good that like this. Now what I'm going to do, I have no double-sided tape here, but I'm going to be sewing this on the other side. So I might as well put my double-sided tape on and notice how far I am from the edge because, again, I don't want to sew through it. So I'm, uh, it's a good, what is it, a quarter inch to a half inch from the edge. And we'll just leave the covering on this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we are going to sew a half inch from this raw edge. I'm going to put my magnetic guide on the half inch needle mark, needle plate mark, directly across from the needle. There's my half inch mark. And I'm going to start sewing not where up here because we're not sewing the shade. The shade actually starts here. So I'm going to start sewing where the shade is, right about there. And we will do a little bit of reversing here.
good. And then just sew down this uh, bottom edge. So here we're coming to the bottom edge of the shade and when I reach that, I'm gonna do a little bit of reversing here. There we go. So I've laid this on the table with the hem facing up now, the hem on the sides, and I've untucked my pocket here so that I can fold this half inch seam allowance up. And then what I like to do is I like to iron it. Now I'm not gonna iron on top of my double-sided tape but this just makes it so that it wants to fold um, upward and fold on that stitch when I fold it up. You'll see here in a second. So I'm just going to press this down. I'm kind of pulling on the fabric at the same time to make sure it's splayed apart. We're going to take this double-sided tape off here. And then I'm going to take double-sided tape and I'm going to put it on the very ends. This just kind of keeps it down when we insert our rod. We're not going to sew this. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Now I'll peel off this transfer paper. And what I want to do is I want to fold this in so that it's even with that edge here. Like that. There we go. Okay, and we'll do the same thing over here. So now what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll fold it up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the bottom side here to make sure that the bottom side's kind of sticking out a little bit, just a teeny bit, because I think it looks better. You don't see this, um, this uh, sleeve from the um, right side of the shade. So as you can see here, a little bit of fold sticking out. It isn't super important to do this. I just think it looks better, more professional. We'll cut that little trailer in here in a minute. And we can baste it at this uh, location pretty easily since we have that double-sided tape on it. Okay, once you're happy with that, before we even take it over and sew, I'm gonna just go ahead and give it a crease with the iron. Now don't turn up your iron too hot because this is umbrella. it doesn't like to be uh, heated to a maximum degree because it can cause shrinkage and if you see any inconsistencies in your fold make modifications before you sew. Okay we're gonna sew very close to this folded edge just like we did before and I'm gonna do some reversing here. We don't want this stitch to come out so I'm gonna sew right here and then reverse. There we go. Now we're going to measure for our rib sleeves. Now don't be alarmed if you measure the width of your shade after you've done some sewing. You'll notice it'll shrink up almost a half inch, even with this light thread. The fabric is very flexible. That shrinkage is okay. We kind of calculated for that when we uh, put in our final measurements. So right now I'm at 56 and a half inches, but I'm also gonna stretch it out a little bit here because we have to put straight lines on the fabric. Up at the top edge, which is up here, I don't have to worry much about putting holes in the fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my fabric to my table, which I know is square here to this edge and I'm going to put an awl uh, right up here and poke it through the table. Now, if you have a good table, you don't want to do this, uh, but our table is meant to be used for this kind of application. Then I'm going to come across here and I'm going to pull it fairly snug here. Uh, and hopefully it's straight. If it's not, I'm going to make some modifications and I'm going to put an awl here. Now on the bottom edge, I don't really want to put holes in the fabric, so I'm going to use these uh, quick grips which work great for this and I'm going to pull snugly on the fabric and uh, then use one of these quick grips with it lined up to the edge of the fat of the table because I'm going to use my table to make sure that my lines are nice and straight and I'm just going to clamp that in place here and do the same thing over here and if I'm off a little bit I'm going to make some adjustments 
So now once everything is clamped in position, what I'm going to use is my uh, T-square and make sure that everything's straight. Oh, I should have had this clamp off to the side so that it didn't get in the way. Like that. And now we know our tables are square. So see, because we sewed this down here, this shrunk up a little bit. So I'm going to take this um, clamp off and I'm actually going to stretch the fabric a little bit that way so it's straight with my square. There we go. And then I'm going to reclamp it in position. Okay, so that side's square. We know the bottom is because it's along the edge of the table. This side is as well. Now the top is not as important because there's extra fabric up here, but it's a good idea to check. So you can see that it's slightly off here. So what I'm going to do, because I don't really want it to be off that much, is I'm actually going to take this all out. And I'm going to pull the fabric up, basically forcing the fabric to come up here, and then put the all in here. And that's almost perfectly straight then. Now go back to the fabric calculator and scroll down to the calculated measurements. First fold line up is 3.97 for us. The next three fold lines is 8.56 inches. 3.97 is basically 4 inches. I'm just going to be a little bit shy of 4 inches and I'm going to mark with uh, my scryball pencil on the clear acrylic ruler that measurement. That way I can measure across the shade and it's the same everywhere. 8.56 is pretty close to here. Again, we don't have to be, except we can round basically. So we have our two measurements. So the first measurement, I'm not gonna use a scryball pencil for this. The first measurement is gonna be here from the bottom edge and then I'm gonna make a line and I've got my fabric all pinned and flat on the table. Make another line here. And another one here. Okay, then up from there, these lines, I'm going to measure the 8.5, whatever it was, here, which I have marked. Strike a line at these three locations. And we're going to do that uh, three times. So this is our first time. I'll strike this one later. I want to just show you the three times. So this is our second, and then this would be our third time. So we have three lines that are that measurement. Now we won't strike the top line. So we're gonna just transfer those marks, and then we'll strike lines across. So I'm using a T-square, and since I have my fabric lined up on the edge of the table perfectly and pinned and clamped at the right spot, we can just strike our line here those three marks that we made basically confirm that our line is at the right spot. This is, this is a side with the hems up. You want to make sure that you do this with the hems up when you mark uh, the fabric, so the back side. I just noticed that we forgot to strike the bottom line, so I'm going to put my ruler here and strike this as well. Now that we have the lines on the material, I'm going to remove the awls and our clamps from the material. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the material on the first line here back. And we want to fold it on this line. So we want that fabric to be folded directly on that chalk line that we made. So you may have to kind of uh, do this with your fingers to get on that chalk line. See the chalk line here? I'm just trying to put that right on the fold down the entire length. And I'm manipulating the fabric so that it's on that fold. There we go. And then I'm going to kind of press it there by hand first to make sure that I'm happy with, with where the fold is ending up and make modifications if I need to. That looks really good. So now I'm going to take my iron again. And it's on a fairly low heat, but I want to crease it well. 
So I want to hopefully have enough heat that it creases. Once that's done, we're going to move up to the next chalk line. Going to grab the shade and we're going to fold it under yet again. And we're going to repeat that same procedure for this line. And then once we have it in the correct position, we're going to iron this one and we're going to continue doing that till we do all the chalk lines for your shade. So now the, every one of these lines has a fairly solid crease. So we're going to start with the bottom one. Doesn't really matter, but I'm going to start with that one. Fold it under and it should crease nicely on that line. Lay the fabric nice and flat. And then just to keep, make sure everything stays in place, we're going to use some of these wonder clips. Um, and position them probably every 12 inches or so uh, down the length because when you're sewing um, you usually it won't crease right there on that spot but sometimes what it'll do is it'll um, kind of um, crease in a different spot when you're sewing and these just help keep everything cr uh, right where you want it to be when you sew next to this. Here's how these wonder clips work. They have a flat bottom side and the top side's not flat obviously and you just put them on the table you open up the clamp and you position them over your fabric. That's, it's that easy. Okay, we need to create a solid sew lines, which is 0.62 inches above and below each fold line, which basically means we're sewing it above the fold line. But it has to be an exact, an exact six, I'm sorry, 0 0.62 inches. And yours may be different depending on the size of your rib or dowel. I have 0.625 on my calipers. I'm going to put it I'm going to kind of lower the needle a little bit, put it on my needle, and then I'm going to use my magnetic guide and position it uh, so that it is the, that distance from the needle, like that. So I'm going to verify that it's uh, 0.625, which it is, from the needle. So we're going to sew uh, and do a little bit of reversing. We're going to keep that fabric up against this magnetic guide so that our sleeve is the right size. And as we come to each one of the wonder clips, we're just going to pull them out. So take your time on this because we want these to be nice and straight. And we don't want that sleeve to deviate. One way you can work with light fabrics is you can actually grab the fabric from behind the sewing machine and grab the fabric from in front and you can guide it nicely. Just don't pull on the fabric, let the sewing machine do the uh, feeding. So once we get to that next wonder clip, I'll move it out of the way, grab the fabric at a different location, and sew. Now when I get to the end, I'm going to do some reversing, and then we're also going to take this back to the table and put wonder clips on the next fold. So first let's get to the end, do a little bit of reversing. And there we go. Again, this is the wrong side of our fabric. Make sure you're putting these on the, the right, or the wrong side of the fabric. So now we're gonna go to our second one, because we got one done. Gonna fold it and make sure it's creased nicely on that crease that we did with the iron. We're gonna install our wonder clips in the same manner, and then we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew it in the same manner. And because the, ma the magnetic guide is positioned where it needs to be, I don't have to do any more measuring. I just have to put this in and sew it. So it makes for a real quick operation. This is our first fold and it's tucked under. And here's our second fold. So we're just going to be repeating this process. But I want, just wanted to show you one more time. We're just going to put it in there and sew right along here, just like we did the first time, doing some reversing at the beginning and the end. And we'll do that for every one of these locations. And, we'll t and when we're done with this, we'll take it to the table, put the wonder clips on the next one, and repeat the process. We'll be sewing these sleeves one more time, and we'll be installing rings at the same time. So this is some of our scrap fabric. And we've already cut this edge with a hot knife. Uh, we'll show you that here in a second when we cut this strip. We're going to cut a one-inch strip. And so I'm using my clear acrylic ruler to strike a line. And these are going to be the tabs for the rings. You can see how many rings you need by looking at the fabric calculator here. So now that we have it marked at one inch width, we're going to put the tempered cutting glass on the bottom side. And then I'm going to use a serrated edge hot knife. This keeps the fabric from unraveling. 
uh, because we're going to have a raw edge. It's going to be folded in half lengthwise, but the raw edge, as you can see with our project, uh, if it were cut with scissors, would unravel pretty quickly. But because we're going to cut it with this hot knife, uh, it will not unravel easily. And we do have two versions of a hot knife. We have the Serrate Edge cordless version, which is the one I'm using and I love using it. And we have one that is corded that is a little bit less expensive. But this one, I am not tethered by a cord. So I'm just going to cut it here. So now I'm going to take my uh, quarter inch seam stick for canvas and upholstery and put it down one side of the strip. Now I don't have to worry about sewing through this. Um, because of the fact that uh, we're going to be sewing uh, across it this way when we sew in our pockets or sleeves and uh, sewing in this much uh, seam stick will not gum up our small needle in very light thread so I don't have to worry about it and it's always better to fold from the center and then work your way out to the sides so I'm going to start here and work my way to the, either the right or the left and match up the raw edges as I fold and then we'll have a double layer strip. To make sure that it's stuck together well, I'm just gonna rub it on the edge of a table like this and that base it very well. I'm gonna cut this end off because it's not very neat. And we're gonna cut strips that are one and a quarter inches in length. It doesn't have to be exact, but uh, approximately that size is what we need um, for each one of these. So I'm just gonna cut multiple strips that are this length. So we're gonna cut down this whole length doing this exact same thing. So I'm gonna use uh, the rings and we're going to insert our strip. And our strip is pretty big, but we wanted it that way because we wanna sew through uh, at least a half inch of fabric. And th then it'll be folded over like this and that will be the attachment point for each one of the rings. So we're gonna put the strip through each one of these rings and then we'll show you what's next. We've got our shade back on our table and we're using the clamps at the corners and the awls at the top. And I'm gonna measure the width. I have 56 and a half inches. We're gonna put our first ring one and a half inches from this edge. And then from this side, we'll have it one and a half inches from this edge. So if we have 56.5 inches is our overall width of the finished shade uh, minus uh, three inches, one and a half on one side, one and a half on the other is 53.5. We need four lift lines, so we need to divide that by three. That means they need to be 17.83 inches apart. 17.83 is about here on our clear acrylic ruler, so we're gonna mark it again with a mark that's removable. And we're gonna first measure over our one and a half inches, and we're gonna use our chalk, not that, uh, not that, um, grease pencil. So from the edge of the finished shade, we're going to mark here. So we can either put a mark right like this, because these marks will come off. And we'll do that on every one of these locations, one and a half inches over, like that. And then from there, we're going to measure over for us the 17.8 something, which is marked here. And we're going to put a mark like that and then we're going to do another one here right like this and then one and a half inches from this edge which is right here now what we'll do is since we have this on the table and it's straight is i will just use my square and match it up to that uh, mark here like that so now we can mark it here with our chalk. We want to mark it so it's, it's clear. And you do want to check your, your chalk. You know, some colored chalks don't come off easily on some fabrics. We've already checked to make sure that a wet rag removes these marks nicely. Um, you don't want to ruin your whole project with a fabric marking pencil that doesn't come off easily. Here's our other mark. We're going to mark it here. So when we take this to the sewing machine and we sew these sleeves down, we can sew in the rings at the same time. Now this is the back side of the fabric, the underside. So we have that marked. Now we need to do the same thing on the sides here. Now if you'd like, you could before you take this to the sewing machine, because we're going to fold this down and we're going to sew here, 
you can actually kind of pull the fabric apart so that it's on that seam and kind of hit it with an iron just to crease it the well there. It makes it a little bit easier for sewing. So we're going to do that with all of these sleeves or pockets. Notice how I'm spreading the fabric apart so that it's on the seam as I do this. We changed the uh, standard presser foot out for the roping zipper foot left, which means there's a negative foot on this side. There's no foot over here. That way we can get close to our rings. This is the top of the shade here. We haven't finished this side yet, but we want these to fold up towards the top of the shade. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this in so that uh, this presser foot is close to that raw edge, as you can see here. So that stitch is very close to this edge here. And I'm going to start sewing here and do a little bit of reversing. Reverse there. Now I want to stop sewing when I get to my mark here because we need to put a ring in there. So I'm going to come up to that point and then I'm going to take one of my rings that I created and I'm going to fold the fabric like so. So it's in half and I'm going to stick it inside this location and push it down as far as I can. And I know my hands are going to get in the way so I'm going to try to use a screwdriver so that you can see what I'm doing here. So I've got that in there and the and rings pushed down as far as it possibly can because um, we, we're going to have to sew next to that. So now I'm going to sew over top of the ring. When I get to the other side, I'm going to actually reverse like that and then continue to sew until we get to our next ring location. Now I want to make sure everything is nice and flat as I sew. So I'm going to make sure it's flat and this, it's splayed out to that seam because if it's not splayed out, it'll cause a bubble. I'm pulling both left and right and making sure that's that down. So here's our next uh, pocket, our next ring location. So I'm going to stop short of it. I'm going to take my next ring, fold it generally in half, put it underneath the pocket by lifting it. Okay, I'm at that location and I will hold it in place and sew through it. so nice and slow and when I get to the other side of it I'm going to put it in reverse so to the other side and then sew through again so we'll just continue to do this down this whole length make sure you pull the fabric across like this because otherwise there, there could be a bubble in here and lay this down flat and hold it till you get to the point where you're holding it Okay, we're going to keep doing this. Here's our next one. We've already done this row. We're going to fold that over, do the same procedure here. Now before I get up, I got a little bit too close the first time, so I'm going to basically stop sewing uh, a little bit shorter. Fold it sort of in half. It doesn't have to be totally in half because you're never going to see the bottom half. We're going to tuck it in there. Uh, we're going to do it just like that right on top of our mark that we made or right in the middle of that mark and I'm going to sew over it. And I'm going to reverse over it. Don't forget to reverse over all these. You want them to be secure. And we'll sew to the next one. Making sure that our fabric is splayed and the pocket is down. In this next chapter, we're going to finish the top edge of our Roman shade.
I have my shade on the table and I'm measuring up from the bottom edge to the top to my desired finish size, which is 35 inches. And I'm gonna mark it in a few spots. Uh, so we struck a line uh, across there. That's our, not our cut line. That's our finished, desired finish size. So now what we wanna do, cause we're gonna put Velcro up here, is we want to uh, strike a line that uh, is uh, an inch below this finished edge because I'm gonna fold the fabric to that. And then we also want a line that's an inch away from there. So we're gonna put two lines on this. So I'm just gonna strike a line an inch from this uh, line that's our finish line and I'm gonna strike a line an inch the, uh, underneath it as well so that I know where to fold to to create a one inch hem. And this is not gonna be a double hem, this is gonna be a single hem. Now I'm gonna cut this edge with a hot knife just because it's a single hem and I don't want it to unravel. You could cut it with scissors, you just have to continue with unraveling. This is my cut line, this is my finish line, this is my fold to line. So in the middle, we're gonna put seam stick because I don't wanna sew through the seam stick when I sew my hem in place and my Velcro. In the middle, we'll avoid that from happening. Now usually we don't worry about sewing through seam stick, but with again, with light fabrics, light thread, and a small needle, sometimes you can get build up of residue on the needle. That's why I try to avoid it with very light projects like this. Just folding to that upper line here to create a one inch single hem. Again, we're gonna put the double sided tape in the middle of our uh, looped Velcro. This is a looped one inch Velcro. Um, we don't wanna put it on the edges because again, the light thread uh, can cause uh, skip stitches uh, when you sew through the double sided tape. Okay, we'll peel off the transfer paper and then we're gonna put it on here and we're going to put it just slightly uh, underneath this top edge because we don't want the Velcro to be visible at all when we uh, use the hook and loop and attach it to our board. Okay, we're gonna sew right along this top edge here. Do some reversing. So we're gonna simply sew the two long edges of this uh, Velcro in this, uh, what is it, a single hem? Yeah. I put my regular presser foot back on from the roping zipper foot left that we had on. You might wanna check your tension while you're doing a, a job like this because Velcro can sometimes mess with tension, but it looks good. Now when we sew the bottom edge, you need to make sure that the uh, Velcro doesn't bubble up. So first I'm gonna do some reversing here to lock it well. So what I do is I typically put my finger in front here to keep it from bubbling as I sew. And we just sew along this edge. We'll just cut the excess off on both uh, tops. At the top of the shade, we'll need to create a head rail. So here's our board that we've selected. And what you want is you want the cord lock, which will be put on similar to this if it goes on this side, to basically fit on the bottom of the board like this. And if you measure this, the optimal size for that uh, is uh, three quarter of an inch. That's the uh, actual size of the board. Nominal size will probably be one inch this direction. And then the actual size of the board this way is one and three eighths inches. Uh, and this is not as, as crucial, the height. Um, the Velcro is gonna be placed on this side of the board and the cord lock will be placed here. So it'll be like this on the shade when we're done. Uh, we're gonna cut this board to the appropriate size, which is equal to the shade's size right there. We're gonna cut a strip of our fabric just to cover the headboard. It, these ends will be visible and the top might be visible, but notice that there are 
we, we don't really have enough to wrap around the ends. So because it's not long enough, I'm just going to cut another strip about the same size here. I don't necessarily need all of this, but I do have other shades, so we can use it for other shades in the RV that we're going to put this up on. We're going to sew these two together to extend the length. We're going to cut some of this out because we don't need all this junk there. And then I'm going to position my board over top of this. And then I'm going to staple. And you can use the serrated upholstery staple gun or you can use just a narrow staple gun. This is the side that we're going to have our Velcro on so it doesn't have to cover this side completely. I'm just going to tack it in place, making sure that it's fairly taut. In a few spots then we'll put a few more staples in. Okay, once that side's on, we're going to roll it around and make sure that it's tight this way. Pull this one over. Make sure it's tight. Pull it over to the next staple. So we just need this to look good. It doesn't have to be fancy or anything like that. So I think what I'll do is roll this around like that. That looks good. And then put a staple here in the corner. And then roll this around here so the end looks good. Put a staple here. And then come around here, put a staple there. So now we have the loop Velcro here and the hook Velcro is gonna go on the back of our uh, board that we created with the fabric. We're gonna go all the way to the end and we're going to staple it. First I just go down here and put some tension all the way on it so I can do this rather quickly. And then we want the Velcro, it doesn't have to be all the way to the top, it can be basically centered or close to centered. And put a few staples down its length. Coming up next, we'll run the lift lines. So now we're gonna take our headboard that we just fashioned and we're gonna attach it to the shade on the Vel Velcro, just as long as it's centered, and it is. That isn't the final mounting position. We're just trying to figure out where each one of these lines will go. What we'll do now is we're going to install eyes into this. So directly up from where each one of these lines are, we want to um, put an eye. So I'm just looking down the shade and I'm gonna punch a hole. You could use a drill to do this as well. Um, and then we're gonna screw in our eyes at each one of these locations up from the rings. These are the eye bolts that we'll uh, screw in and we just want to screw them into the board. Once they get started we'll use a screwdriver or an awl and we'll turn them in there so they're, the threads are pretty much buried in the board. And once we get to that point what we'll do is we'll make the eyes so they go like that. So they are vertical with the uh, height of the shade. We'll do that at each one of these locations. This is the cord lock for the uh, s small shades and it has a large opening on this side and then if you flip it around you can see it has a small opening on this side. This is meant for one cord and this is meant for multiple cords to come through. The small side we want down facing out. Uh, if we were to install it on this side, and we want it as close to this eye as possible. We're going to take a 564 inch leech line and run it through each one of these rings coming up uh, the side of the shade. And we want this to go obviously vertical or up the height of the shade. And we're going to go through this uh, eye bolt here 
And this is where we're going to have the cord lock. So I just need probably a foot of extra line from here to here, approximately. We're going to be trimming it to size later on. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the bottom of my line with scissors. I really should use a hot knife. In fact, I'm going to use a hot knife now. I'm just going to touch the end of the line with a hot knife. You could use a, a lighter to do this. That keeps it from unraveling. Don't burn your fabric. And then we're going to use these clear stops. We could tie a knot to the ring, but I really like this because it makes it totally adjustable. And they work very, very well. They're, they don't, don't undo at all. So that's what we're going to use at the bottom of each one of these rows. We're going to do that same thing here to the next row, except for we have to have the line going towards the cord lock, which is going to be here. I have not installed the cord lock yet because I find it easier to run all the lines through the cord lock while it's not installed on the headboard. So I'm going to come over here, go through here, and then what I want is I want to run my line this direction towards the cord lock and pretend let me throw that on the floor so it expands. I'm not going to go through this one, but I'm going to pretend that I have the cord lock here and I'm going to give it another foot. Okay, and then I'm going to cut it there. And I'm going to do that with every single one of these. Going this way, up, and then coming down about a foot. This way, over through each one of these, and then give it about a foot. We're not going to go through the last one, but we will go through each one of these as we go through these. I'm going to touch the ends of the lines so they are not unraveling, that'll make it easier to get it through the cord lock. With a hot knife, you can use a lighter for this if you'd like as well. We have four cords. There we go. So the, th the uh, three coming from this side go through the large hole as we discussed earlier. And I'm going to feed in one at a time. Here's the large hole. There's the small hole right there. So we're going to go through this large hole, and you have to hold the cord lock up like this, otherwise the uh, it'll lock on itself if you hold it upside down like that. So hold it up. So push it through that large hole, and I like to feed this out, basically giving me a few inches, and then feed it down through the round um, pulleys. And I'll show you this here in a second. I know I, it can't, you can't see it yet. So I got it down and it's coming out the bottom. So notice here it goes in the middle of those white cogged pulleys. And then um, that's how it should look when it's done. And if you look at the bottom, it's bet between the brass one and the white one. And it's coming out of one of these wires because I have, I have uh, four lines. So I don't want to put them all through like this side of the wire. I want them to distribute them as evenly as possible. So now I'm going to get my next line and I'm going to repeat the process going through the large hole on the side, taking out about three or four inches of line and then feeding it down through the cord lock like so. And then once it's through Sometimes you have to roll it a little bit to get it through. This is, requires some patience here. And if you can see it from the bottom side, which I can, you can sometimes take a pick or an awl and you can actually kind of grab it and feed it through one of the wires that you want to go through. We want to go through this middle one. So there we go. So now that one's done. And we have one more coming through the large hole. And we'll get that one set up and then we'll show you what to do with the one coming through the small hole. Okay, before I put the last one in, take a look. I've got three lines coming through the wires, but notice one is crossed. This one, these two should be changed. Um, this doesn't make as smooth a transaction if it doesn't actually come through the wire uh, on the location that it wants to pass through. And I want them to be even, and I want it to be a very smooth working lock system. So now I've got that one in the right spot. And this one that's in the middle should go through this middle wire. So sometimes at the end I change them up if I don't like the way that they look. So now look at that. 
now they're all going in consistently and across the uh, pulleys consistently and the wires. That's what I want. Now I can concentrate on the last one. Okay, so this one, this is the one on the side. It's going to go through the small hole and we're going to take out several inches of it, making sure that our cord lock is up and then we will feed it through in the same manner with this up so that the lock is open and the more you put in the more difficult it is to feed it through I can't even see it yet so I gotta keep working it down now I've got it through so now I'm gonna pull on it and then I'm going to inspect to see how everything is laying yet again by looking at the bottom yes that looks good I've got a nice even transition between all four of my lines. So now I'm going to just pull them through, making sure that none of them come through. There we go. And we're going to position this here. And I'm going to move that cord out of the way. And I'm going to use my awl to pre punch a hole. You could use a drill to do this as well. we're going to put a screw there. So I'm going to put a screw in this one first and then we'll put a screw in the second one once we have its general location. So I'm going to tighten that one down pretty hard. Now I like to have a couple inches uh, of extra line here and that's why I pulled some out of these locks. Now we can go to the cord lock and with the shade laying flat and open all the way like it is here and all the lines fairly taut we're going to cut all the lines at this exact location. Um, and we want to leave not very much, just enough to make a knot, uh, which is right about here. So that's about uh, four, five, six inches. There's no exact science in this. And I'm just gonna cut all those lines with a hot knife. And then what I will do is I will feed these through our condenser here. So we're gonna go through the hole here in the, in the larger bell first. I have three through, and then I'm gonna put this fourth one through. So now we have, we have all four lines through here. Now what I'll do is I'll just create a knot to keep this from coming out. Probably should have had a little bit more line because it's a little bit hard for my fat fingers to do. And we'll make sure that's nice and secure. The knot's definitely big enough that it's not going to come out. <coughs> and then I'm going to take my hot knife and just basically melt the end of this. That'll kind of bond them all together and also makes it easier to fit inside that bell. Okay, now push the bell over in the knot inside of it. Then we will take an additional line um, that's longer than the shade. We're going to trim it to size afterwards. And I will run it through the top of the small bell. And then just to make sure that it doesn't come undone, I'm going to put this plastic ring through it. So this little ring here that comes with each one of these condensers. And I will tie a knot in this line or two, since this is a single line, just to make it fairly fat. Like that. And then this basically does not allow it to pass. This gets pushed up into here. And there's what you've got like that and we're going to cut this excess off and then we're going to screw this to the larger one 
like so. Now we have four lines that come into one line. Now on the end of the single line, which we're going to use to raise and lower the shade, we're going to put a wooden tassel. And Sarah it has several to select from. I usually like to put it in the center of the shade so that I don't have a ton of cord. But uh, this is a preference. You can put it anywhere you'd like. Um, if you want to put it lower, you can. And then I put it through a small hole and tie a knot in it as well. And there we go. Next, we'll insert the ribs in the sleeves. Now we're going to insert the ribs. You can see that the rib is actually too long. The ribs need to be about a quarter inch shy of the edge of the shade. So I'm going to mark it here. It's already a quarter inch shy of the other edge as well. And I'm going to use wire cutters, or in this situation, the wire cutters are built into my needle nose pliers right here. What I'm going to do is I'm on one of the ends of each one of these sleeves, I'm going to insert this small piece. Now notice, see there's there's a uh, upper portion and a lower portion. You can't put it through the lower portion because you're going to run into each one of the uh, tabs that secure the rings, but you can put it in the upper portion here. So we're going to feed this into the upper portion of our sleeve, which is, this is the back side of our shade. So I've got it all the way in there, and I'm just going to stop there. This makes it really easy for us to insert the ribs into each one of the sleeves because it's going to run into that double hem on that side and then but because of that extra rib stuck in there it should push right out so i'm doing the same thing here i'm making sure it's going into the upper portion of the sleeve this is the back side of the shade facing up and then i'm just whoops it was in now it's out there we go and i'm going to push it in all the way and watch what happens at the other end. So when we hit that one, because we put that little scrap in there, it is gonna go right through like that. Once the rib is in, and you may have to get something to push it in a little bit deeper. I'm gonna just use my finger here. And we have some fabric here. You can either hand sew it I like to use the uh, micro basting gun and just insert the needle in the fabric, make sure it comes out the back side like that and then just press the trigger and now I have a clear uh, tab that will not allow these uh, ribs to come out. Let's do that on the other side as well. So we have a tab on one side and a tab on the other, and that rib's not going to come out. We'll be inserting a heavy bottom rod in the sleeve at the bottom to enable the cord lock to work. Okay, these are our bottom rods for fabric shades, and as you can see, ours is not long enough. Uh, we've got it even at the end there, and we want to cut it just shy. Um, we want to be able to sew this in if you'd like to, so because we don't want this coming out. So I'm going to cut it about a half inch shy, and then we have a, a, a splicer that splices this together like so. And you can use, if you'd like, you can use a glue to glue this in place, but that'll uh, make it possible for us to make these longer. But first we're going to cut this with a hacksaw. So now it's cut to size. I'm just going to insert the end that we cut. in, And if, if you were leaving that end raw, you could actually sand it so that it was smooth. And I think, I don't think I'm going to glue it because I'm going to sew this shut. So now we need to insert this into our bottom sleeve that we created. And there is a half inch hem there, so we want to be on one side of that half inch hem. And if we've done it right, it should tuck inside of there so that we could actually hand stitch this close. Yep, and this close. So I definitely have a half inch. I can go a little bit further here. Perfect. Without that rated rod, the cord lock would not work. So the bottom rod's inserted and you can either hand sew this or again you can use the micro baster and we'll go through in a couple spots. One, 
two, and maybe one more. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, and that should keep it from coming out. So you can either hand sew or you can do this quick pr process. Now we get to install the Roman shade. So there's the fullest extent of the shade. And we want to make sure that it covers the window completely. Looks like we need to go down a little bit, so right about there. So it looks like four and a quarter inches. And that gives me good coverage and gets me to the point where I want the shade to come down and hide the window. Because campers or RVs are not typically level, I'm going to measure and mark at four and a quarter. And I'm also going to check from the window to make sure that that measurement is the same all the way across. So I'm just placing small marks on the on the uh, w the wall so that I know exactly where it should be mounted. So I have this positioned exactly where I have my marks, and you can just let the shade hang. Okay, so at that position. Everything's good. I'm going to take a screw and hopefully I'm going to bite into something in the RV that is solid enough. We'll find out. Doesn't matter how many holes you put in this headboard, nobody's going to see the see them. I like to put a screw in the center first, that way I can make sure it's nice and level. Nice. It's actually biting into something. So now, I'll make sure that it's level. I'm gonna peel up the rest of the shade. Boom. And we are level. And hopefully I'm gonna bite into something here. I don't want it to go too hard because there's just not much substance here. There we go, now one more screw down here. So now all we need to do is reposition our shade on the Velcro, center it, and you have to do this a couple times more than likely. But we can make adjustments to the shade just by undoing it from the Velcro and reapplying it. If it's a little bit crooked, you know, it really won't matter. You've got all kinds of wiggle room because of that Velcro. Okay, our sleeved, ribbed Roman shade is complete. As you can see, we made and installed a valance box which covers the top half of the shade. Nice. The list of materials and the tools that we used is coming up next. Visit the Serite Fabric Calculator for a detailed list of the materials required for your particular size sleeved ribbed Roman shade. Since the construction of this type of Roman shade requires a single layer of fabric and no liner, we recommend the highly UV resistant Sunbrella upholstery fabric that's available from Serite. We have hundreds to choose from. If you have any questions, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.